sometimes people in your situation, their incompleteness is that they don't feel that they have an incompleteness. <laughs> A lot of people talk about what are you passionate about? Um, you, I'm sure you've seen that diagram before. What were you born gifted with? What do you like to do? What can you get paid to do? That's a really helpful diagram. Um, but some of the deeper stuff that I have found that's been really tangible and meaningful to me, I found, uh, and I should give a tribute to his name, but I've forgotten his name off the top of my head. But this was, I think, a great exercise. He said, write down a list of all the things that you think your purpose is Mm. until you start to cry. Mm. And what I found was as I was writing that list, you get to a point where some of them trigger you a little bit emotionally, but there's one that when you actually tangibly see it, there is a soul alignment with like the universe and the stars and everything yeah. and the fiber. It's like, that is it. So that's one quick little hack. The other hack that I gave, this is the goal that I was talking about earlier is and I'll just say it plainly, become the person that you needed as a child. Mm -hmm. wow. So that, that there's a couple of pieces to that. Number one, there is a, there's a, a feeling of incompleteness that you may have experienced as a child. Um, and sometimes people in your situation, their incompleteness is that they don't feel that they have an incompleteness. <laughs> right. They mm. feel like they've been given so much. And so they have, and, and I dealt with this a lot too. It's like, I don't have any room to complain. My mother loved me unconditionally. My father, you know, made a lot of money. Like, what do I have to complain about? I go to these personal development courses and this person was sex trafficked and this person was, you know, beaten and anally raped and all this stuff. And I'm like, whoa, that's heavy stuff. Like who am I to even begin to remotely think about complaining? Well, guess yeah. what? That's a heavy mental block that keeps mm. me from living my higher purpose, this guilt, shame, uh, and, and mm. those pieces. And it took me a while to develop the courage to be able to say like, uh, this isn't about comparing yourself to anybody else. It's your own journey. It's your own pain. It's your own hangups or whatever. Mm. And it's not until you, you can get all of that other stuff out of the way. So to go back to what I said again, a second ago, becoming the person that you need as a child, one of the things that I needed that I didn't get what I, and this is my own interpretation because I may have gotten a lot of this, was just parental figures that actually saw me, that I didn't feel seen. I didn't feel acknowledged. I didn't feel, um, mm. you know, in, in those, in a lot of moments. And so as a result, I withdrew a lot. I, I, I keep people at an arm's length emotionally. Um, yeah. And so part of my special power now when I'm working with individuals is that I can get to the court, like I can see them and I don't stop until I find till they, and a lot of times my clients will say, um, dude, you, you get me like nobody's ever really seen this before. And people will be in tears in 10 minutes and they've been working with other coaches for years because there's a, there's an empathy and a depth that, that I bring to help them feel seen and understood. And then from that place we can point towards, well, what is your purpose and what are you really here for? And, and is the doctorate track really for you? Or are you just trying to live into what mom and dad wanted for you? Yeah. And yeah. it's so often we get let off track and, and we don't take our unique gifts and, uh, and apply those and make a dent in the world with that. Yeah.